All right, Nico Minero is coming. Should you open spotlights for her? Should you spend tokens on her? What are going to be the best day one decks for Nico Minero? Do not sleep on this card. A lot of people are talking about it not being that great. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Discuss it with Brad in the video from last week. And I'm telling you, this card is going to be solid. If you're hesitant or you're maybe on the lower end of spending, having uh, tokens or caches, wait a few days. Because look, I don't want you to just trust me at my word, but you should. But seriously speaking, you want to wait and make sure that the card looks good before you're going to However, I do think this card is going to be really, really good. There's just so much flexibility with the card that I think so many decks out there are going to benefit from it. We'll share some decks in this video, get to whether you should open the spotlight, spend tokens, etc., as well as share a biggest key with Nico Monero at the end of the video. So make sure to stay for that. Nico's a one, two, meaning cost one energy to you get two power. She's going to cast a specific spell on reveal. After you play your next card, this card casts a spell. Those spells change every turn. It's not set per a turn. They just change randomly. It's purely RNG. I'm not going to do crazy deep dives on this because, well, I'll tell you in a second. These are the spells that she's going to cast. They're going to do a good job, they being second dinner, of showing you what these are. It's going to be really intuitive in game. Again, I'm going to allude to how I know that in a second. But basically, you can get a demon. You can destroy the next card you play and then draw two cards. Move the card you play next to the right. You can give the next card you play plus two power you can change the location of where you play your next card after you play that next card add another copy of it to your hand which is kind of like a nice little cloning vats or the last one here is after you play your next card double this card's power meaning nico again all cool things some of them a little bit more niche than others i'm not going to dive deep into this but i think they're really fun and flexible and again they change every turn so like i mentioned there might or might not be another video uh, where I'm covering some Nico stuff. Uh, I would check some of the bigger Marvel Snap channels out there for that. So I don't want to do deep dives into some decks that I'm maybe or maybe not discussing or all that sort of thing. But I will say I love Nico Falcon. I'm not covering that in this video, but it's a ton of fun. You should look into it and check out the video or not video or I don't know what I'm talking about. There are three other shells in that or not in that video that you could look at with Nico as well. But again, not covering those here. Again, she's insanely, insanely flexible. So let's dive into the few fun decks that I've got for this particular video. All right, we always want to shout out Marvel Snap Zone. They've got a great deck builder. I absolutely love using this thing. It's always fantastic and helps me build decks. The first one I want to look at is Nico Thanos. Really, what's the concept here? I wanted to try something with Thanos, with Nico and Thanos together. I just think that there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of fun stuff there. Uh, you could do multiple versions of Thanos ongoing. We'll look at another one in a second. But this is the first one I wanted to look at. What we've got here, Agent 13, because I do have Devil Dino to help build up those card base. Obviously, with Thanos and potentially drawing some cards with the stones, I think that's phenomenal. Then you've got Nico. I, I, again, I, so many things that she can do there. I, I, she helps in a multitude of ways. Elsa Bloodstone, I still absolutely love her. I love pairing her with Nico, especially when you can copy Elsa. Who doesn't want to keep feeding some power to the last cards played? Potentially removal there. We'll cover that here in a little bit. Psylocke, yes, let's try to use that to potentially get either our uh, Devil Dinosaur earlier or maybe even our Professor X earlier. I want to do that. Jeff is a fantastic card anytime you have Professor X. Iron Lad, only real risk here is maybe Professor X, but even with that... At a 4-6, that's a decent play. You've probably got a little bit of power out before then. And honestly, if some of these ones, you got a 1, a 1, and a Elsa, and you play Iron Lad on that same lane, that feels pretty good to me. Liking it. Uh, Blue Marvel, again, Iron Lad copies that. Phenomenal. Gives some additional points to those stones. Professor X, I mentioned. Devil Dino, because of all these potential extra draws. I put Vision in this one for now. That's definitely a flex card, in my opinion, but I think Vision is getting used a little bit more. Uh, anytime you've got that extra energy early as well, I think that gives you the ability to bring that on the board and move it around as needed. Thanos, obviously, for the stones. And Eliath, because, you know, it's Eliath, and why not? I think that's another flex card you could potentially take out. My outs, I, I do say Eliath, Vision, and Agent 13. You could bring in Claw, Killmonger. I say Mobius, just because Mobius is generally a good card. Armor, and maybe you've got some bigger cards you're a little bit worried about. Shang, or adding Nebula. 
I think all of those are decent ads to put into this. Obviously, Claw to help with that Professor X type situation. But I like the general shell of a Nico Thanos. The next one we got, again, Nico Destroy Thanos. So I wanted to show this one because Thanos Destroy, I think, is a little bit different. And I wanted to just get a feel for this. So here, X-23, right? I want to get some extra energy. Uh, I've got Nico, as always. Bucky I've currently got in here. Carnage Venom Deathlock for my destroy cards. I've got the Shuri Nimrod combo in here, and this is something we'll talk about with the ins and outs in a second. I also have Lady Deathstrike here because it'd be fun to take out Bucky, X-23, the stones. I just think that Lady Deathstrike is a nice fit here. Maybe if you don't go that Nimrod ride, I think it's, I like it. I think there's a lot of else's out there. There's a lot of Luke Cage's out there. Lady Deathstrike will help clean that up. Again, Shuri and Nimrod together with Destroy is always good. It's an easy two-card combo to throw in there to get a lot of power. So it's like, why not? Null, because you're destroying stuff. Why wouldn't we want to have Null out there? And then Thanos for the stones. Death, because we're expecting to destroy a lot. So I think we're going to potentially get some decent power out late with Death as well. And I mean, think about Nico combined with the next card you played, copy into your hand. If for some reason you get Death cheap early and Nico is able to copy that, you get two free <laughs> Deaths. Like, are you kidding or too cheap to us yeah i'm down i'm totally down for that you want to try to combo that anytime you can uh ins and outs here again i mentioned shuri nimrod that's a, a an easy combo to take in or out of a deck and then maybe you want to put in killmonger to take out some of those ones yandu to get some more destroy out there because you've got null nova to get some more points out there oh maybe wolverine uh, i don't know sometimes i struggle with wolverine and some of the destroy decks but if you're thinking that might be a route you want to go then you could certainly go there all right, another destroy deck that we're going to have is Nico Deadpool Destroy. Um, I, in talking to Brad Sefer last week, I really enjoyed some of the decks he put together. Uh, I like the concept of destroy. He mentioned Deadpool in it. I wanted to try to use that similar, but a little bit different. So let's see what my version of this is. It's a lot of the same cards, but I've got X-23 Forge, which again, Brad was talking about, and I thought was a really, really good idea uh, with stuff like this. Obviously, Nico, we're looking to build up that Deadpool as much as possible, right? We want to try to get as many points uh, or on him as possible with Forge, Nico, Hulkbuster. Those cards are to feed your Deadpool as much as possible. Carnage, Deathlock, Venom for destroying. Killmonger to also destroy. At this point, it destroys Forge as well, but we don't really care if it destroys Forge and Nico. It obviously will take out X-23 as well. Hulkbuster for that Deadpool. And then we've got Shuri nimrod combination yet again obviously you could take that off if you want and then null because if you're destroying deadpool a lot and it's getting really really big that null is going to get really really big and if you do the proper destroy on say turn five and you can play that deadpool and null on turn six that's phenomenal uh the ins and outs here uh i say out maybe x23 again shuri nimrod and even null you could bring in taskmaster death and nova i think that's more the route that brad goes I'm not saying one's better than the other. I think it depends on your play style a little bit. Uh, also, maybe if you want a certain curve, but I've got a lot of one through threes here and then only three cards, four cost or higher. So depending on how you want to go there, I think it's really dependent on locations, obviously in Cosmo and uh, armor counters, but I like this deck. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I would definitely check it out. All right, last but not least, another deck uh, influenced, uh, motivated, inspired by Brad Sefer. He talked about he had two different surfer decks. I wanted to do something a little bit di different. Uh, not a lot a bit different because, I mean, how different can surfer be? But uh, I threw Beast into my surfer version as well. But you get the Forge Nico uh, build in there. I also have Elsa because I'm like, well, maybe fill in some of these lanes. That could be fun. Maybe you've got Silk in one. That could be a lot of fun. I think popping around, maybe feeding that Craven. With Craven, I've also got Spider-Man. I think that's something that you may, I mean, cause right now the only moves I got are Juggernaut, Spider-Man, Silk, Polaris. That's it, okay? Oh, well, potentially Nico move to the right as well, but that's, you gotta be careful. Don't just count on that with Craven. So maybe you wanna move away from the move a little bit with this, I would go there. But I like the idea of from Beast all the way to Storm are all threes. The Brood obviously fills up a potential lane. I like the Storm Brood combination. Polaris moving, uh, Silver Surfer. And look, you can Nico Silver Surfer on five and get a copy of that card and bring it back, which is awesome. And then you'd surf again. So 
you know, maybe you want to go into Wong or something like that too. This one, I'm not sure if the power will be super high enough. Maybe you throw Cosmo in a certain lane as well. But I really wanted to play with something with Surfer and Nico because Surfer's fallen off a little bit lately, not because he's not good, but I think because people have been distracted by other good decks and that's just the way it sort of works. But I wanted to lean heavily into a lot of threes here, a little bit of lockdown, a little bit of moving stuff around and potentially beasting things to maybe get more benefits out of them. I mean, I would personally try to forge Nico, maybe Elsa, and then beast it. Uh, and then that way you get some good points on beast. You can replay your forge and your Nico. I think that's all good. And your Elsa, I think that's all phenomenal. You get things really cheap and I love it. Things that I would look at taking out of this one, again, beast, silk, craven, like I mentioned. What I'd want to put in, and it's not there yet, but Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night is coming soon. I would absolutely plug this in this deck. Again, Brad mentioned that in his version two of Surfer. I think he also had Sebastian Shaw, which doesn't come until November, or I'm sorry, December. But absolutely put Werewolf by Night in a deck like this. I think it'd be so phenomenal. Any type of on reveals that you can get would be great. And you'd get that a Werewolf by Night moving around. Also, maybe look at Killmonger. Uh, it's a three cost. You know, you get your Forge and your Nico off the board so you can get more threes out there. Maybe put Nova out there as well. Uh, and maybe, I don't know, any other th uh, Maximus, you put an Act Maximus in there as well. So those are all the decks that I wanted to put in here. Again, there's going to be another video, maybe, maybe not out there that uh, I cover some different decks. Please go check that out. Support the channel. We're trying to grow it as much as possible. Now, I mentioned the biggest key for Nico that I wanted to talk about before getting out of here. We talked about this in the video with Brad. He brings it up in his article. You do not need to play Nico on curve. You do not need to play her early. You can play her early, mid, late. Do not just play Nico. Have a plan with Nico. You want to see what her spell is. You want to have a card that's lined up. I mean, look, you can always blind play and see if you get lucky, but that's, I assume at that point in the game, you're like, well, they haven't snapped. I'm going to keep trying. She is a card that you want to play with a plan. I think people are going to absolutely love this card. It's going to be insanely, insanely flexible. So please be patient with as far as when you play her and don't feel like you have to play her early, even if you get her early. She's a card you might not play super often. So these are the decks that I wanted to showcase a little bit or at least share as far as on day one. Should you open her? I got a graphic for this. And yeah, she was one of the ones that I had saved for for a long time. Same with Werewolf by Night. These are cards that I think everybody's going to want to get. The Kitty Pride Phoenix Force, you know, uh, they play together well too. Open for open uh, tokens, series five. I typically prefer to open spotlights for versus spending tokens. So you can spend your tokens on series four, but she is going to be a card that I think everybody's going to want to get. And I highly, highly recommend opening. But again, like I said, at the front end, wait and see if you're somebody who's got minimal amount of things saved between your spotlight caches and tokens. But I feel pretty confident she's going to be good. So look, I appreciate you making this far. Let me know what your thoughts are as far as the decks I showcased in this in the description below. If you want to hammer down that like button, it's probably the biggest thing you can do to help support the channel. Subscribe, anything along those lines. Comment below. Always appreciate it. And let me know what the decks you're thinking about playing are or the, the, your thoughts on these decks. What should we be doing with Nico? Until next time, we hope you have a wonderful day.